And just like that, we are now one day away from Halloween. And to celebrate, I thought I'd wrap up the Halloween retrospectives with the Disney short film Trick or Treat. I was torn between this one or Halloween Town, which of course was my most recent, but when a lot of us think about Halloween, we have many nostalgic memories of going out dressed as whatever and going trick or treating, so I think that this is a good one to wrap it up with. One Halloween night in Toontown, which is probably where these classic Disney cartoons are set, I'm just guessing, a witch by the name of Hazel, not to be confused with Witch Hazel from Looney Tunes, goes around making all kinds of trouble, even frightening a cat by just saying the word BOO. But Hazel gets a fright herself when a jack-o'-lantern turns to her direction, but it's revealed to be just part of a Halloween costume, with Huey, Dewey, and Louie in costume trick-or-treating. In a lot of cartoons from this time, it was often hard to tell which one was which, as the boys would sometimes be wearing the same outfit, and in others they were wearing different outfits but were never referred to by name. The boys make their way to their Uncle Donald's house, but between the options of trick or treat, Donald chooses trick, and instead of candy, he gives the boys firecrackers, which explode in their bag and he dumps water on them as Witch Hazel watches. Witch Hazel finds the boys, and since the boys believe in witches, she offers to get candy from Donald, but Donald picks trick once again and pulls Hazel's nose as she gets water poured on her. Wow, what an asshole! Witch Hazel seeks revenge and has the boys assist her in putting together a very powerful potion. She tastes it for herself, and when she sees how powerful it truly is, she thinks she can use it to get candy out of Donald for Huey, Dewey, and Louie. As Donald's having some treats of his own, he hears Witch Hazel's laugh, and he sees her and Huey, Dewey, and Louie flying on Hazel's broom, testing her potion out on a pumpkin that comes alive, fence posts that turns into ghosts, and a gate that becomes a harp that one of the ghosts plays. The pumpkin and the ghosts sing the cartoon's title song, performed by the Mellomen, a singing group who were often used for various Disney projects, such as the Zorro television series where they sang the theme song, the Disneyland attractions Pirates of the Caribbean, The Haunted Mansion, and The Enchanted Tiki Room, and the films Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, The Jungle Book, Lady and the Tramp, and Paul Bunyan. Fun fact, the bass singer in the Mellomen is Thurl Ravenscroft, who in addition to being a regular singer for Walt Disney was the iconic voice of Tony the Tiger for Kellogg's Frosted Flakes and the singer of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch for the classic Dr. Seuss special How the Grinch Stole Christmas. In this cartoon, Thurl does the voice of the singing pumpkin. I must say, his voice talents were simply GREAT! Sorry, I couldn't resist. The ghosts and pumpkin come over to Donald's house and sing to him. The lyrics basically confront Donald for pranking Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And it kind of went something like, Trick or treat, trick or treat for Halloween! And with the ghosts and pumpkins coming to life, like uh, there was a line, Every post is a ghost if you've got a witch's brew. And if you want your gate to circulate, we can do that too. And it ends with, You better not be stingy or your nightmares will come true. When the song ends and the ghosts and pumpkin disappear, Witch Hazel demands that Donald give the boys treats. Donald fears Witch Hazel and he starts to gather some treats for the boys. But when Hazel tells the boys that Donald's a pushover, he hears her and gets really annoyed by that and refuses to give the boys treats at all, going as far as to lock his pantry door and swallow the key. Plan B for Hazel is to cast a spell on Donald, spraying her potion on his feet as they move uncontrollably. Hazel signals Donald's feet to kick the key out of Donald's stomach, but it only just makes Donald dance. Using her broom as a banjo, Hazel sings a little country dance song that controls Donald's feet. At one point, it does manage to get the key out of him, but he takes it right back. She uses her potion to make a cactus grow bigger, and it pokes Donald's butt, with him screaming the key out again, but he once again very quickly takes it back. Hazel finishes the dance by having Donald sit very close to the fireplace, and it burns him, and the key flies out of his mouth for the third time. Donald retaliates by throwing the key underneath the locked pantry, making Hazel even more angry and casting another spell. The spell takes Donald a bit farther away from the door in an attempt to make him run so fast that the door breaks down. The first few attempts don't work, so Hazel sends Donald's feet back by a mile or two, and he runs back to the house so fast that this time, he successfully breaks the door down, and Huey, Dewey, and Louie gather their treats. Huey, Dewey, and Louie say their goodbyes to Hazel as she flies off with her broom, and the trick-or-treat song is reprised one more time. And that's it, that's all! That is the last of my Nostalgia Talk Halloween retrospectives. And I have to say, I've really had a lot of fun with them, and I hope that you've enjoyed listening to me talk about all of these, and hopefully you have good memories of the various productions that I spoke about just as much as I do. Maybe I'll do more Halloween retrospectives next year, but in the meantime, Happy Halloween! If you're going trick-or-treating or going to a party, stay safe and have fun. See you later.